My last video was about some of the changes seen in the Antarctic ecosystem and its wildlife brought about by climate change. I am now going to talk about the changes seen in the Arctic. Just like the Antarctic, Arctic ice is also being affected by climate change. The Arctic Ocean is made up of multi-year sea ice, which as the name suggests remains all year. Over the past 40 years, the amount of multi-year ice has decreased. It also consists of seasonal sea ice, which grows and melts every year. Over the last 40 years, the sea ice extent during both the growing and melting season has been reduced. It is estimated that the amount of sea ice is shrinking by 14% per decade. The maximum extent is seen between late February and early April, and the minimum is seen in September. But the sea ice is now breaking up sooner and forming later. The Greenland ice sheet is also changing due to climate change. One section has seen its melting increase by 575% over the past 20 years as compared to pre-industrial times. It is estimated that in the 20th century, Greenland lost 9,000 billion tonnes of ice, accounting for 25 millimetres of sea level rise. Ice cores have been taken from the ice sheet and using satellite measurements, scientists have shown that the melting of the ice sheet started shortly after Industrial Revolution in the mid-1800s. Another problem faced by the Greenland ice sheet is that it's becoming darker due to soot and microorganisms like algae, which are carried through the air. This means that the ice then absorbs more solar energy and so melts faster, which in turn allows microorganisms to spread further. The melting of the Greenland ice sheet also adds to sea level rise. If it were to completely thaw, it would raise sea level by more than 7 metres. I'm sure you all know that polar bears are really suffering due to climate change, but why exactly is that? Well, polar bears eat almost exclusively seals, which contain a huge amount of calories, which the bear needs. Polar bears need 12,325 calories a day, even though in a study they were found to be active for only 35% of their time. The bears hunt seals on sea ice. They will wait for hours at the breathing holes of seals, waiting for them to pop their heads up. This is called still hunting. The bear will then stand on its hind legs and smack it on the head with both front paws to stun it, and then drag it onto the ice to eat. The problem is that with sea ice breaking up sooner and forming later, the bears have to burn huge amounts of energy walking or swimming long distances to get to any remaining ice and the seal populations. Or they stay on land longer, spending the summer and increasing the autumn living off their fat reserves. A study placed GPS collars on nine female bears and took blood and urine samples. They were recaptured 8 to 11 days later and some very sad data was collected. One bear swam 426 miles over nine days losing 22% of her body weight and more depressingly the nursing cub that was with her. Four of the bears didn't catch a single seal and lost 10% or more of their body mass. In the 10 days one bear lost nearly 44 pounds including lean muscle and another bear leapt into the sea to try to catch a passing seal. It didn't succeed. It is estimated that 20,000 to 30,000 polar bears in 19 different populations are scattered across the top of the US, Canada, Greenland, Norway and Russia. Four of these populations are declining. Bears in the Beaufort Sea region are the best studied and their numbers have fallen by 40% in 10 years. It is a heartbreaking situation and I fear that polar bears will become extinct in the wild and only ever seen in zoos. Other wildlife is also at risk. The World Wildlife Fund have produced a very interesting document on the possible effects of a changing climate on cetaceans. Within this document are possible consequences on populations due to melting Arctic sea ice. A number of species are dependent on the productive ice edge for feeding and some use ice cover to avoid predation. A reduction in ice cover could affect food availability for beluga whales, but also bowhead numbers may increase as they have more ice-free area to forage in. In response to temperature changes, more temperate species may move northward. This could disrupt food webs with disastrous consequences to the ecosystem. Also, species of whale that migrate to the Arctic for food could find that their prey have moved outside their usual feeding ground. There is a sea route through Canada's high Arctic called the Northwest Passage that connects the Atlantic with the Pacific Ocean. A reduction in sea ice will make this passage much more navigable and open the passage to shipping for longer lengths of time. The eastern part of the passage, the Lancaster Sound region, is one of the richest areas for marine mammals and birds in the Canadian Arctic. 
it is feared that with more boat traffic, there will be an increased risk of chemical and noise pollution, as well as an increased risk of collisions between whales and ships. Other human activities that may pose an increased risk to our marine life are that of more commercial fishing, as fishermen follow the changing fish stock distribution. Also, additional oil and gas exploration in these now ice-free seas could take place, all of which will add to noise pollution, collisions between whales and ships, and the increased risk of oil spills. It isn't just scientists noticing changes. Arctic communities have identified major changes in weather and sea ice cover, as well as changes in the distribution, abundance and condition of Arctic wildlife, such as polar bears, fish, walruses, moose and reindeer. Earlier this year, Scientists from the Norwegian Polar Institute reported finding 200 reindeer that had starved to death on the Norwegian archipelago of Svalbard. The problem is that due to milder temperatures in the region, there was unusually heavy rainfall in December. When this froze, it formed a thick layer of ice and the reindeer could not dig through the hardened tundra to reach the vegetation they graze on. These icing events mean that it takes more energy for the reindeer to forage for their food which results in malnutrition and ultimately, as in this case, results in starvation. Climate change is also affecting reindeer migration. Many populations of reindeer migrate. Some migrate across sea ice and other populations migrate across frozen lakes and rivers. With an increase in temperature, the annual timing of ice formation and breakup has changed. If the ice is not suitable for the reindeer to move on, they end up travelling much further, which increases the energetic cost of migration. Another problem faced by reindeer, due to the increase in temperature, is that of having an increase in the amount of time they are harassed by insects. Studies have shown a link between warmer summers and poor body condition related to insect harassment. They end up spending so much time and energy trying to find relief from insect harassment that they don't spend enough time feeding. However, there is a suggestion that the increase in summer precipitation and cloudier weather, which results from climate change, could reduce insect harassment in some areas. Needless to say, scientists are monitoring the situation closely. Another problem faced by the Arctic is wildfires. As I write, wildfires are raging in various parts of the Arctic. This involves the burning of trees, but also peat. This in itself is not unusual. Wildfires are common in the Arctic from May to October, but the intensity, length of time of burning, and the latitude that they are occurring at are all unprecedented. Between the 1st of June and the 21st of July, the amount of carbon dioxide emitted is estimated to be 100 megatons, which amounts to the entire fossil fuel emissions of Belgium in 2017. The reason why this is happening is because warmer temperatures are drying the forests and making them more susceptible to burning. The final problem I'm going to discuss is the melting of permafrost in the Arctic. Permafrost is frozen ground found in the Arctic. About one quarter of the land in the northern hemisphere is frozen in this way and it can be up to 80 metres thick. The upper layer seasonally melts, but this layer is gradually getting thicker and reaching deeper into the ground. When permafrost thaws, the frozen organic matter also thaws out and begins to decay due to microbial action. This produces either carbon dioxide if oxygen is present or methane if conditions are anaerobic. If a lot of ice in the deep soil melts to liquid water, the land slumps and subsides, as ice takes up a greater volume than water. This depression fills with water from rain, snow melt and ground ice melt and forms what is called a thermocast lake. The water in the lake speeds up the thawing of the frozen soil along the shoreline and the lake gets bigger in size and depth, much faster than gradual thawing. This abrupt thawing is estimated to be occurring in less than 20% of frozen land, but it increases the release of carbon dioxide by 50%, and it releases more methane than gradual thawing. The other problem with this thawing is that forests can be flooded, killing large areas of trees, which then become lakes. Lakes that have existed for generations can disappear or have their waters diverted. Rivers that were clear are now thick with sediment, roads are buckling, and houses have become unstable. Over time, the lakes are invaded by wetland plants and eventually will drain and be converted back to tundra, so eventually some of the effects will be mitigated by more vegetation. However, scientists don't yet understand the implications of this. What they do know is that the extra carbon in the atmosphere will increase warming, which in turn will thaw more permafrost. This concludes my videos on climate change. There is a lot more that I could write about the impact we are having on our one world. I have certainly not been able to cover everything, But I hope that in having discussed some of our most beautiful environments and their iconic wildlife, 
I have given you a bit of an insight into the devastating effects climate change is having on them. My next video, to be released in two weeks time, is about the plight of sea turtles. This is going to be released a day early on the Sunday, to coincide with Ben's video that week, which is about turtle evolution. If you don't know about Ben's channel, then go to my featured channels. There's only one at the moment.